Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to my YouTube channel again. My name is Fred. So, for the just concluded um, NECO examination, I'm going to be answering all the questions. All right? Um, 2025 NECO examination. All right, so um, we have four questions here link mechanism, development, um, true shape, and um, isometric. So, I will be starting with the first question here, question number one. All right, so if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so because. Um, Amazing things happen on this channel, and um, you have a lot to learn from this channel as well. Okay, so the first question is on link mechanism. It says in figure 4.1 below, um, cranks A, B, and C, D are connected by a link B, D. So this is crank A, B, and C, D. They are connected by this link B, D. Okay, so A, B rotates about A, while C, D oscillates. So please note the difference between the two types of motion. So for A, B, it is what? Rotating about what? A. While for CD, it is what? Oscillating, that is to and fro. All right? So you, you have to take note of those um, um, key um, words there. Okay? So this one moves to and fro. All right, so now trace the locus of point P, this point, in one complete revolution of crank AB. So in one complete revolution of this, given this data. So we're going to use this data to produce um, this here. All right, so from... <clears throat> From this drawing, we know that AB is what? Um, 50 mm. So you measure 50 mm. So here we have 50 mm. That's our 50. Okay. With this 50 now, um, so the first thing I'm going to do is to draw a line. Draw a thin line. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line, a horizontal line, a thin line. Then I will need to at any convenient point of my choice here. And with the 50, I've measured I will draw a circle, thin lines. Now I'm going to divide this circle into 12 equal parts. So what I would do is I would drop um, a perpendicular here. All right, so I will align my set square in order for me to be able to drop a perpendicular. Okay, um, I'll make an adjustment. All right, so I will support um, my set square with this enable me to drop this perpendicular on this line and that divides the circle into um, four equal parts so I will go ahead and divide the circle into 12 equal parts so I will align my set square draw this position my set square like this draw this everything I'm doing right now they are all thin lines please I will draw this and finally I will do this by this I would have divided this equal into 12 equal parts so now I'm going to look at um, this so if you look if this were to be a clock you will notice that this is like one o'clock okay one on the clock so that means I'm going to draw this line here, thick line to represent this crank, and I will locate the other one. So with thick lines, I'm going to draw this. All right. So the next thing is I'm going to label. So this is A. And this is my B. So we are told that the crank rotates clockwise. So um, all of these divisions you see, they represent crank at different points. The crank A, B at different points. So let's say this is B1, okay, at this point. Then I have this as what? B2, 3, 4, 5, up to 12. 
Okay, so that's it. So the next thing I'm, I'm going to do is to locate um, this point C. So we are told that AC from here is 100. So I'm going to measure 100. That's 10. So, um, I have my zero here, and I have 10 here. Okay, so that's it. So this is um, C. Okay, now we're told that um, this crank here, CD, is 75. All right, that's 7.5. Now we're going to measure 7.5 on our ruler. So this is 7.5 on our ruler. Then you're going to needle at this point C and describe an arc in this form. Just stop somewhere there. Okay? Now remember, this um, crank here, CD, Oscillate, that means it moves to and fro. As this one is turning, all right, we pull it back and it will go back and to it, it keep moving to and fro. That's oscillatory. Do not forget that. Now we're going to locate BD, all right, on this arc so that we can bring out the other crank. Now we are told here that BD is um, uh, BD here, or if you like DB, yes, BD is 120. So you measure 120. That's 12. So here I have my 12. All right. With this 12, you needle at B. And you cut this arc at that point. So you connect this with a thick line to the point C. And that gives you the second crank. Then you connect this with the, um, the shaft or the connecting rod with a thick line to B. Okay, so this is um, D. This is C and this is uh, B. So now we've uh, brought the skeletal structure. We've already brought it out. Now we're going to locate um, the crank, okay, for other points. So for when the crank was... At this point one, where is the point P? Because we're asked to look for the locus of the point P. So we're going to look for P. So the P, the distance from B to P, we're told, is um, that's BP 60. So that means we're going to measure 60. Okay, so what I did was to get another pair of compass, okay? Now I'm going to fix this one at the, um, the connecting rod, which is... Um, 120. Then I'm going to fix BP 60 with the other pair of compass. You can also use a pair of divider if you like. So I'm going to stretch 60 here. And that gives me uh, BP. So I'll needle on B and cut. And I have that point there. So this is my my um, P. Now, you're going to get this pattern for all other points of 2, 3, 4, um, and to 12, okay? So remember, this one is 60. This one is 120 for the crank, um, for this uh, shaft, that's the connecting rod, and uh, for this uh, BP. So I'm going to keep it fixed throughout the drawing. Now, with this 120, the crank, I will look, look for uh, two. We have to cut this arc because you know this sharp, uh, sorry, this other crank here is moving to and fro, oscillatory. So at point two, it will be here. So I will cut. So let me call this one D2. And let me call this one D1. While this one is P1. Okay? So you will connect. To, now, this time around, you're going to use thin lines throughout the drawing. 
So you connect D2 to, to what? With thin lines to 2. And now locate BP2. So this one now becomes B2 now. So we needle here with this 60. Needle on 2 and locate P2. So this becomes our what? P2. Now we'll continue for 3. Remember this is 120. You needle on 3 and you cut this arc. So watch very closely. So it is cutting at this point here. And I'll call this on my D3. Alright. So join it with a thin line to 3. And locate P on it using your 60. And that gives us um, P3. I'll go to number 4. And cut the arc. Remember, it is going back now. And this is my, this point here is my D4. So I'm just going to look for the rest, D5. So with this needle on five and cut, that's D5, D6, needle on six and cut, six, D7, needle on seven and cut. So I'm going to write, uh, this is D4, this is D5, D6, D7. So I'm not confused. Um, eight. So check this out. They are very close. This is D8. D8, nine. Needle on nine. And cut. Remember, I'm using the 120 to do that. This is D9. Okay, then 10. and cut very close to D5. So this is D10. This one here is this D10 and this is D5. Don't forget that. Okay. Then 11, you need it on 11 and cut. And this is D11. And finally D12, you need it on 12 and cut. And this is D12. All right. So what do you do? You connect. So we stopped at um, three. So we're going to connect to D4. So this is four, connect to four. With a thin line. And locate the corresponding, using your 60 for BP. You needle on four and cut. And this gives you what? your D, sorry, your P4. So I'm going to join five. So this is five here. I'm going to join six. This is D6 here. I'm going to join seven. <clears throat> this is D7 here. Join eight. This is D eight here. Nine. Um, sorry, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. So sorry, I mistakenly joined. I was I confused this for D six. This is actually D nine. So this is D six here. So I'm going to erase this line and connect it to six and connect this one to nine. So take note of that. Okay, so I have effected the correction. Let me zoom this in a little bit. So now this is D9. I will connect it to 9.
This is D10. Here. I think I made another mistake here again. I connected. This is supposed to be um, D5 here. And this is supposed to be. Am I right with that? Okay, I think I am right. Yes. So this is D5. I'm right. Now, this is D10. So you have to be very, very careful and be sure you don't um, model the points up. So this is D10, please. You connect it to 10. This is D11. Connect to 11. And this is D12. Connect to 12. All right, so let's continue from where we stopped. So this is a P4. Now for five, now please always take note of the line. This is for five, you look for P5. That's a point there for six. Cut line six. For seven, be very, very careful here. This is line seven. This one. So we have um, this. This. And this. That's for seven. So this is a P4, P5, P6, P7. So I'm going to do the same for eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So I'll just needle on and cut, locate B. Sorry, P. All right. Okay, so I'm done with it. So you have all the points here. So it's taken after this shape, like this, more or less like a mango shape. All right. So I'm going to use a French curve to connect all of these locus, all those points. Clean curve. Okay, so this is what you get at the end of the day, the um, locus. So we're done with. Uh, answering the entire question please where you do not understand ensure to go over the question over the steps again and um i'm very very sure you get it right and where you have questions please drop them on the, in the comment box all right subscribe to this channel share the videos like i'll come here again with the other question thanks for watching do have a nice day bye